Hi guys, it's Lucy here. So welcome to another speed build. So today I'm sharing another family home and this time it's another part of my seven days of base game series, which is a mini series that I'm doing throughout this week that The Sims 4 is becoming free. So you guys can now get the base game of The Sims 4 for completely free, which I think is very exciting. And we should actually have some news now what all of the, uh, like hype has been about and what they're going to announce at the summit. I'm really, really hoping that it's going to be something big. I mean, I really, I have no idea. I have no guesses. I really don't even have like a hunch really of what it is, but now that I am sharing this, we should all know. So it's very exciting. Hopefully it's something good, but I'm pre-recording this of course for the week. And I'm just uh, very excited to be sharing these builds with you guys. This one is going to be a mansion as the title suggests. And I really just wanted to create like a big Southern style mansion house, of course, using only base game. And this one is going to be the fourth one that I am sharing. So if you guys have missed the other three videos, I will have them linked so you guys can find them really easily. But I'm doing seven of them total, hence the seven days of base game. And it's going to be a combination of original builds like this one, and then also renovations that are hybrid between this series and my renovating base game series. It just kind of made sense for me to do both of them at the same time because I still have so many builds to do for that series and yeah I just am completely am loving them and I hope you guys are too and hopefully you guys love this build this house ends up being ginormous and I think just super special and super pretty I saw this painting on Pinterest and I'll put it up on screen so you guys can see what I was looking at and all of the information and stuff too it's such a beautiful piece of artwork and it just completely inspired this whole build like I was trying to stick very closely to the painting for the front of the house and as you can see I was trying to make it blue the painting is white and so I do change it here in just a little while back to white but I was just worried that the white wouldn't be like the color of white I want it to be just because like the base game sidings I don't know aren't aren't the best and depending on the lighting sometimes they look a little bit weird but once I changed it I really felt like I was definitely capturing that painting a lot more and that's really what I wanted to do because I just thought it was so pretty and I just absolutely love when I find a painting rather than like a real house or like house plans i feel like they're they just look more just kind of magical in a way if that makes sense they just look extra special and so whenever i get inspired by them i feel like i'm like extra inspired and i feel like the build comes out even better because of it and i just think this build is all of those things i just think it's extra special and just a super cool house and i'm very happy that i stuck with it because honestly at about this point when I was like doing the roof and figuring out like the rest of the shape of the house, basically when I was getting beyond what I could really see in the painting, I was kind of second guessing myself and second guessing the build and not really liking it that much, but I decided just to change the color of it to white and then just kind of push on basically. And I'm really happy that I did because I think it's one of the best builds that I've ever done, even, even for like it being a base game build. like. Out of all of my builds <laughs> i think it's really good so i definitely think it's one of the best base game ones i've done but definitely one of my best builds overall but definitely let me know if you guys agree um i think something that i felt was a little bit awkward about this build was the roof line and so i added these dormer windows they don't lead to anywhere and like the turret tower doesn't lead to anywhere either so there's nothing up there but of course you could probably figure out a way to make it accessible to your sims but i didn't think it was totally necessary i just really wanted to have extra decorations at the top of the build to make the roof line not look so boring i just really wanted it to feel like an old special house and so um that's what i was trying to do and i also made this little tower a little bit taller too i think it's maybe taller than the original one no i think it's probably about the same maybe it has one more floor i'm not exactly sure but um yeah i thought it looked super pretty and i also really liked adding the red flowers on the windows and then i added some red flowers in the landscaping as well and then there's some red on the interior i tried to not make this build so overly like matchy with a particular color scheme i really just tried to make it feel like an old classic home i mean it still feels like cohesive but i just really wanted it to feel very traditional and not super matchy matchy even though you know matchy could still be traditional i was just trying to make it feel more realistic by not having everything perfectly matching and, but it still it still matches somehow. I don't know. You guys can let me know what you guys think. Um, here I was going to use this fence in combination with these little brick pillars that you guys can find using the live edit objects. And I like them, but I decided that I didn't love them. And so I do end up changing it for a regular fence. But I used the regular fence in 
a low lying option and then I use it in combination with a live edit objects fence you guys will see that just in a little while and I think it actually looks really good together so I'm definitely going to have to remember it for a future build because I think the combination of them uh, work really nicely together and then I also added a fountain in the front because I thought that would be nice and fancy <laughs> and so I thought that looked really good and I also used this nice brick pathway that of course is base game and I um, have it leading to the front of the build and then around the build and then also at the back of the build it's like the whole like lower part of the yard air well not the yard the lower part of the patio area I guess I don't know what you would call like the paved area at the back of the house but um it's where the swimming pool is i put um some lounge chairs back there it's pretty simply decorated of course with these uh base game builds i'm definitely trying to keep them more on the minimally decorated style and that's something that i've been doing with my renovating base game series as well i really want them to feel more like the original ea builds uh just of course in my building style <laughs> but not as overly decorated as the majority of my builds are because I really want them to work on all types of computers and I really want them to be a lot more player fr like friendly basically and I've mentioned this in the other parts of the series but I just I know that I get carried away with like furniture and decorations and I'm sure they're not always the most playable builds even though I may play test something that is um like an essential item like a bed or a refrigerator or something or like the toilet <laughs> um, I'm sure there's other things that come up that don't function super easily so um, it's definitely a goal of mine with these base game builds to keep them more simply decorated uh, here I decided to add some terrain paint to create a more interesting looking front yard make the house feel more grand and more manicured and landscaped like they definitely have gardeners come and take care of uh, the yard and the flowers and everything and so I felt like that was a perfect way to do it I would have also really liked to have added like a maid's room or like a butler suite you can have a maid with base game but they don't actually live with you they just come you know I think just every day or probably every so often I'm not exactly sure but they don't live with you so it didn't feel necessary and of course we do have butlers but that comes with vintage glamour which is a stuff pack and I feel like stuff packs might be the least common aside from kits that people actually get so I didn't really think it was too necessary to try to squeeze in an extra room for a butler but maybe you could find a way to add like a staircase down to a basement and that would be an easy way to add a butler's room if you do have that stuff pack so something to think about um, if you guys decide to download this build but anyways here I was just copying over the flooring for the back porch I decided to create a large balcony on the back of the house as well because I thought that it would be perfect to be able to like overlook the beautiful garden gardens behind this house I think the original build here is called the Umbridge Manor you guys can see the title of it in the top left hand side of the screen it's just too small and blurry for me to read right now but um yeah if you want to place it in the same location it's right there on this lot right across or kind of like diagonal from the Goths house so I'm sure you guys recognize the neighborhood but um yeah I still need to renovate the original build here and honestly I don't really want to I don't know it just I don't really like the original build that's here and I feel like even if I renovate it it's not gonna really improve exterior wise and if it does improve it's gonna be like an entirely new build I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens but anyways here I'm working out the floor plan I actually end up really loving the floor plan a lot when I was first kind of figuring it out I felt like it was going to be a little bit awkward and I was kind of unsure of some of like the room placements like the office and like the bathroom and stuff and even like the living room I don't know and well actually especially the kitchen and dining room I thought it was going to be super awkward but once I actually started placing the furniture pieces and decorating I think it worked so nicely and I'm just like completely in love with it so I'm hoping that you guys like it as much as I do because I think this build is so cool <laughs> and then even the second floor I think it came together really nicely too and actually pretty easily there are four bedrooms upstairs there's a shared bathroom for the kids rooms and then an ensuite bathroom for the parents room and then the balcony at the front of the build is accessible by everybody meaning that the door is just in the hallway but the one to the back balcony is only accessible through the master bedroom because that's the only place I put a door so um, it's more of like the parents balcony <laughs> rather than everybody but of course I'm sure the children would be more than welcome to walk through their parents bedroom to use the back balcony if they would like to <laughs> but um yeah for the kids room I decided to do one for each of the ages besides a baby so there's a toddler room a child's room and a teenager's room and I thought that was pretty fun and for them 
and their personalities, I mostly stuck to just color schemes. So the toddler room is a yellow room, and then the uh, kids room is a pink room, and then the teens room is a blue room. Uh, but for the teens room, I kind of gave them a little bit more personality. I was thinking that they're really into like movies and like show business. And so I was thinking going along with like base game, maybe they want to be a comedian because of course that's a base game career. And so I put a microphone in there and I thought that, that was pretty fun. And I don't typically do interiors for comedians that often. And so I thought that was kind of fun to do for a teenager. And I have no idea what the parents do. I feel like they're just very high up in like business or something. I don't know. I'm kind of forgetting the rest of the base game careers. Because of course they can't be like a doctor or a lawyer, I don't think, right? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I, I'm so bad at this because I never play the game. And I'm sure you guys know this by now. I pretty much only build and I've been only building for like years now. And so it's been a long time since I've actually played. But um, anyways, back here, I did add a swimming pool. And this is what I was talking about with the like lower patio area. So it's just the paved area. And I just continued with this red brick and I added some monkey bars back here. And then I do some landscaping, of course. Oh yeah, and I added these live edit objects. Uh, hanging planters on the back porch. I felt like this was so perfect. And when I was taking screenshots back here, I thought it was really pretty as well. And then I also add a barbecue. I was trying to figure out exactly where to add it, but I just end up adding it on the porch. And then I put an outdoor dining table up there as well. So that's more of just like the outdoor eating area. And then you can come out here down by the pool and lounge. And of course the kids could play on the monkey bars. And I really just kept it more simply decorated. Like I thought about adding maybe like a gazebo or I don't know, a sandbox or something, but I liked the simple placement of everything. And once I added like the landscaping, it felt fully decorated and there really wasn't much room to add anything else. Like a gazebo I think would have been pretty, pretty crowded and pretty cozy back here. And especially if I would have added maybe like a greenhouse, cause that's like the only other thing I could think of that may have been like a nice thing to include. But I don't know, you're, you're like right on the edge of these beautiful gardens. So I didn't think it was too necessary to have anything extra back here. And I didn't really want to block the garden. So like I even thought about not even having the fence go around the build completely. Like I thought about maybe just having some like hedges or something next to the pool instead of the fence. But then I was like, well, the pool's right here. So maybe they do want some privacy. I don't know. I kind of went back and forth in my head about it, but of course it's none of it really matters because the Sims aren't too worried about privacy unless they are in the bathroom. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, there I just added some lights on the pool. And then over here, I felt like the way I did the terrain paint was kind of awkward butting up to uh, the pathway. So I just changed it a little bit, but it's not too different. And there I just added some floor decoration inside the swimming pool. And then here I move the barbecue over here and then add an outdoor dining table. I used this one that was not in the base game originally. We got it at some point during an update, but I thought it looked really pretty just because I like the tablecloth on it. And then I just paired it with some chairs and then I put a couple of decorations over here by the back door and a garden hose as well. And then here I'm moving on to the interior. I do also decorate the front porch, by the way. I just kind of moved on to the interior. I just add a little seating area out there. And then on the front balcony, I add a little gaming table just so your Sims have something to do out there. And I already added a chess table on the interior at that point. And so I didn't think another chess table was necessary. So just a little gaming table. And then here I'm decorating the entryway to the build. I love how I made the staircase like a double like wide staircase. Normally I don't do this just because the builds don't call for it, but I felt like this build definitely needed a more grander staircase entrance. And then I used the marble flooring and I thought that was really pretty. The front door is off centered a little bit. So hopefully that doesn't bother you guys, but it does line up with the staircase in the front of the build. And so I felt like that was more necessary. And then I could kind of balance out the interior, not looking so awkward with like decorations on either side of the door. So that's what I tried to do. And then there's just picking out the wallpapers. I really enjoyed the wallpapers that I used in this build because they have lots of pattern to them, but they're more of like the subtler choices, I think, because they're more of like whites and creams and like that very light brown color. And so I think that um, worked out pretty nicely. But yeah, here I'm back to the porch. <laughs> and so I just add a little seating area out here. Very simple, but it's just a nice little area for your Sims to hang out and maybe have some tea or something. Of course, tea is not base game, but um, well, I guess there's the teapot, but not like the little tea tray that came from uh, the My Wedding Stories pack. I would have loved to have used that on the front porch. That would be so perfect. But anyways, um, over here is going to be like a little 
Mm, I don't know what you would call this little nook, but I just put a piano in here. It's kind of like a miniature library. So I put the piano in here, some bookcases, and just a few simple decorations, one chair, and then there's also a grandfather clock. But I felt like that piano was so perfect in that color, so I was really excited about the way that looked. And then over here is going to be the living area. The living area I was kind of worried about because I knew the way I wanted to place the furniture was gonna be a little bit awkward with the back door, but I think it actually ends up working somehow i don't know i think especially once i place the chairs here instead of the couch it just made it feel a little bit more open even though it still takes up like the same amount of space so i don't know if you guys agree but i thought it looked really good and i really enjoyed using these couches because they're just so traditional and like they have these stripes on them and i just love the colors but over here is the chess table that i was talking about so the living room has a chess table and then the upstairs balcony has a gaming table and i just used it in a gray swatch just because i felt like it stood out the least and more looked like a regular table. But of course your Sims can like play cards and stuff on it. So yeah, I thought that was a fun thing to include. And then over here is going to be the dining space. So the dining room and the kitchen are all one room. I don't typically do this, especially in such traditional homes, but I felt like for the shape of this area, it was gonna be the only way that I was gonna make it work. And so I definitely think it was the right decision because I ended up just absolutely loving both the kitchen and dining room and I think they work so nicely together so maybe it was originally like this or maybe somebody has renovated this space by removing a wall or something I don't know I just love it I don't know you guys gonna have to let me know if you like it too but I felt like it was just so grand and like the kitchen is massive <laughs> like I never create kitchens this big but I just I really enjoy decorating it and I think it looks really good and even for not like an overly decorated kitchen because of course uh, like I've been talking about the decorations are more minimal and you know just it's a more simply decorated space and so even though it is more simply decorated it feels so full and I don't know I still really enjoyed it even though it doesn't have as much clutter as I normally add so yeah I don't know it was just really fun for me but hopefully you guys like it too there I did add a dishwasher and I wanted to mention it because it is kind of far from the sink Maybe you could make the island a little bit bigger if you wanted to have it there, but I don't know. It didn't really bother me too much. I don't know, because it's The Sims and The Sims won't really mind going over there to load the dishwasher because they don't have to do like a bunch of dishes at once. But part of me couldn't help but think if it was a realistic kitchen and you would have like, you know, your pile of dishes and then you'd have to walk them over to the dishwasher, it would be kind of annoying. <laughs> and so I usually try to avoid that, but it was, I don't know, it just felt necessary to have a dishwasher. So I just added one anyways. And yeah, over here is going to be an office space. So it is right off the kitchen, which might be kind of an awkward location for most interiors, but I didn't know what else to do with this space. And I felt like this home needed a formal office space. And so it might be a little bit weird that it has the entrance right there on the kitchen. So I don't know, maybe you guys would wanna do something different with that, but I didn't mind too much. So I was happy with the way it turned out anyways, even though it's not like the most ideal floor plan. And then over here is going to be the downstairs bathroom. So it's kind of like a Jack and Jill bathroom where you can access it from the kitchen, but also the living room. And I just felt like this was completely necessary because the house is so big and I felt like it would take a long time for your Sims to walk all the way around from like the living room to the kitchen if they needed to use the bathroom or like vice versa. So yeah, I didn't think that that would work out the best. So yeah, Jack and Jill, I felt like it was a better solution. And then here I'm moving on to the second floor. So this is the landing area at the top of the stairs. I just love how open it is to the like the floor below, but it's not so open that it's like all the way to the front of the house. I felt like it was like the right amount of a grand entrance. And so um, I thought it looked really pretty here. And then I just add some decorations around like some bookcases, some side tables, some plants and artwork and a mirror and a grandfather clock again and some wall lights and stuff like that so yeah I don't know I felt like it was a nice fully decorated landing sometimes I feel like those spaces are kind of awkward to decorate because they're literally just hallways and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to figure out what to add to make it feel like full and like purposely decorated because I don't know sometimes I feel like there's just awkward spaces but I think this one turned out nice and then over here is going to be the master bedroom so for the master bedroom it's just a nice big grand bedroom they have a big fancy double bed they have a fireplace in here with a little seating area right in front of it I definitely like to do this when I have a larger bedroom just to kind of take up space having a little seating area by the fireplace is like a great way to do it and then I also added that base game um 
kind of statue decoration with the necklace inside. I felt like that was a very fancy, expensive necklace that this family owns and they keep it in a case, but occasionally wear it maybe when the family member has to go to like a fancy event or something. I'm not sure what these events are, but I'm sure there's an occasion that comes up where that necklace is called for. And then this is going to be the ensuite bathroom to the parents' bedroom. It's pretty simply decorated, but it's nice and big and I love the shape of it and I love how you can see the bathtub from the master bedroom area. I mean, you can also see like the majority of the bathroom, but it just always feels kind of like um, extra special and fancy when you can do that. Uh, there I just added a toddler potty and a high chair because I decided I wanted to have a toddler room. Really up until this point, I wasn't thinking too much about the kids' rooms. And so I kind of just decided at this moment I was going to have, you know, a toddler room, a kid's room, and a teen's room. The first one that I'm going to be decorating is this teenager's room. So the blue room, I decided that this uh, Sim really likes movies and comedy, and so I think they aspire to be a famous comedian. And <laughs> so I thought that, that was a fun idea, and it gave me a good opportunity to use some of these base game posters that look like basically like movie posters. And so I used a few of them in here and I think they look really nice. And this room is pretty simply decorated like the rest of the house, but I still feel like it has a lot of personality and I added some like messy clothes on the floor, um, which I thought was pretty nice for a teenager's room. There I do realize that I add the same poster twice. So that poster that I just had here to the left was the same one that I put above the bed. So I just removed this one to the left and add a different one instead. And then above the desk area, I have another poster. This one is a little bit more like youthful looking, but I just felt like it was maybe like their favorite series or something from being a kid. Cause it's kind of like, like a Harry Potter looking poster. So thought that was pretty fun. And then over here is going to be the pink room. And for the pink room, I really didn't add anything specific as far as like skill building. There's just like the dollhouse. I didn't add like a science table or an arts and crafts table. I probably should have, but I didn't. I just added the dollhouse instead. And this big old teddy bear in the pink color, I thought that was pretty fun. And then I just added basically any decoration that I could find that kind of went along with the color scheme that I was going for. So anything pink, oh, I did add a violin. Okay, so they do have a skill building thing in here. I was thinking that I didn't add anything at all. So this kid plays the violin. So I think that's nice and it worked perfectly because it did come in a pink color. And then over here is going to be the toddler's room. So the toddler's room, I just did a yellow toddler room basically because I found this wallpaper and I thought the color was nice. And I knew we had quite a few decorations in a more like peachy yellowy color that I could use nice for a toddler's room or that would work nice for a toddler's room. So yeah, I think it came together pretty nicely, but of course it is, it's pretty simple. I don't know, I felt like even if I were to add more things in here, we're still kind of limited when it comes to base game decorations for toddlers. Like I still feel like we just don't have a lot of options, even when we have the rest of the packs, especially when it comes to like artwork and stuff, I feel, very limited and so it can be kind of frustrating but anyways this is going to be the shared bathroom for the kids to use it comes together pretty quickly and then i just add the final few decorations on the back balcony and the front balcony as well so just a couple of decorations and activities for the sims and then this is it for the build i hope you guys have enjoyed this base game mansion hopefully you guys are looking forward to the rest of my seven days of base game i will have them linked in the description so you guys can find them really easily and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and please leave any comments or suggestions you have and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!